Hi guys, my name is Michael and this is channel not just for the PS Vita fans. Welcome! The Final Fantasy Saga continues with its fifth installment released on the PS Vita. This is the Android port and not the PS1 classic version and in today's video we'll be checking out the setup process, then we'll be comparing what's different in each version and what enhancements have been added and in the end we'll talk about the performance, playability and overall impressions. So without any further ado, let's dive right into it. The port has been brought over by Frank Gars, huge thanks to him. In case you wanna support his work, you can do so via the link below. The credit goes to Rin, Flo and Darth Belek as well for their share of contribution. Well done guys, once again big up for supporting the Vita, it's truly appreciated. Now to the setup process, clearly this is not comprehensive guide, this is just flying through it as it is the same thing over and over like with every other Android Vita port. First install the plugins, then obtain the game files by all means necessary, then shuffle some files around, install WPK and mission accomplished, Square Enix would be proud of you and me too. And if you are not bothered by setting it all up by yourself, it doesn't take much googling to find the complete package, it is out there. Next let's compare what sets both versions apart. I found this handy website with all nuances listed, link for the website is down below. The biggest difference consists of that that the PS1 is based on the Super Famicom version and Android slash PS Vita port is based on the Game Boy Advance version. The graphics and the gameplay is fairly enhanced. It would take way too long to go through all the individual changes, but in case you really want to know, why not to dive deep into it. And in short, I can tell you the Android version is much more suitable for modern day gamer. Now to the gameplay and performance. The game comes with configurator app, same like the GTA San Andreas. You can play there with bunch of settings like resolution, billionaire filter, anti-aliasing, post FX effect and language. I wish every Android port comes with this kind of treatment. It is pretty neat, useful and forward thinking. The game can be controlled either solely via touch input or normally by buttons and sticks. I prefer physical controls though and everything works as it should no unexpected errors or surprises. The performance is rock solid, 60 FPS, no slowdowns, the graphics look sweet and even though I'm not a huge fan of Final Fantasy franchise, it appeals to me as well. Final Fantasy IV The After Years is still being worked on as well and that will be the next installment coming to join our happy PS Vita Final Fantasy Android Sports family. There are no more Final Fantasy games listed on the website after the after years, so be ready it might be the last one. However, no one knows for sure what's coming next so you never know what might come from some devoted death. Therefore, no need to lose the hope. Keep your spirits high and don't lose your enthusiasm. There is always new port on the horizon. <laughs> and what do you think about the new Final Fantasy V release guys? Are you gonna get it? I would absolutely recommend getting it if you are a Square Enix fan and even if you are not, it's still worthwhile. Let me know your thoughts down below. We are coming to the part of the video where I tell you if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and share it with other PS Vita enthusiasts, it means a lot to me and to the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to check out our Discord server and follow me on social media. You can now also support the channel. All the links are down below. Sub to the channel means you most likely won't miss upcoming content, there is at least one video coming out every week. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.